Need a ride? As far as I can. Hop in. Um, how are you doing? Nice, nice to speak to you. Nice, nice to speak to you as well. The first thing I want to ask you is um, the, the, something that really kind of drew my attention to this film was the fact that it's about a group of serial killers and there's only one person in that group who's a female and that's yours. So was that, I mean, was there any specific thing that the, the Black Form Films team said to you that they thought that you were just the right person to play the only kind of female person in this circle of killers? When I read the breakdown, I got a good sense of what the character was like, and I just trusted my instincts with the audition. And the sense that I got was, you know, she was very much a woman in a man's world. So she needed to have an attitude that just said, don't mess with me. And for them not to suspect anything from her, she also needed to have a stomach of steel because of everything that they're talking about and mm -hmm. a, real, a really good poker face. That was what I brought to it and it, it clicked. Like we, we seem to be really aligned in our vision for the character and just kind of riffed off of each other in terms of ideas. Uh -huh. I mean, when, when, you, when you sat down with Cody for the first time, did, did you kind of more or less have the same kind of idea of the way that you wanted to take Carrie's character? Big time. When Cody and I sat down, I was shocked at how aligned we were uh -huh. uh, without having known the backstory that he had come up with. I had come up with a very similar one. Um, and we both just wanted to strengthen her sense of purpose and why she was doing this and also why she had a soft spot for Joel. Uh, so the idea that we went with was that he reminded her of uh, her brother who was right. killed in a mass murder. Sorry to interrupt your meeting. Thanks so much for coming out. How do you maintain your lifestyle and keep your urges under control? Uh, and then I want to talk about the, the whole setting. Um, uh, it really transports us into this the '80s vibe. No, was that something that you you had vivid memories and you you kind of you you looking forward to get to get into the '80s and and how did you kind of approach getting into the '80s? Did, did Cody help you in that sense in in terms of maybe films that he'd like you to watch or or music he'd like you to listen to things like that? Because I know that he, he sent uh, Steph Copeland, the 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 woman who wrote the soundtrack, he sent her like albums to listen to to kind of get into that '80s moment. Did it, did, was, was there a similar kind of working process with, with Cody and you for that? Cody had referenced Shaun of the Dead as right. um, kind of the tone of the film. Um, and specifically for my character, he gave me a watch list of um, Terminator 2, Mad Max, um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Kill Bill, which I loved all of those choices. And it really pumped me up to see such powerful performances and then to have an opportunity to sink my teeth into such a strong female role. Uh -huh. They're very, there's a, a wide disparity between those films and a lot of them are not, not even 80s set. Was there any specific True. reason why, why, why he said these would be good for you to get into character? The films he chose were specifically for Carrie um, and the kind of strength that she carries, <laughs> excuse <laughs> the play on word. And, um, and I think that they all sort of have um, a deep sense of conviction, a deep sense of purpose, a deep belief in what they do. Uh, they all know how to fight. Um, they're warriors. Um, and so I think that that was kind of like the benchmark of the badassery that Cody wanted for Carrie. But in right. terms of the 80s vibe, um, the sense that I got was just own the fact that the 80s is a time where you couldn't really go too big. Not that our performance didn't need to be grounded because of course they did or else you lose the connection with the audience, but it just meant that we had a lot of freedom with what we can do. And that was just amazing as an actor to step into a film where you know you have a level of freedom where you, you can try things and you can't really go too big. If it's too big, it's like, okay, we won't use that, but let's try something else. There was just so much room to explore. Quarter! It got really messy. I like it messy sometimes. Smack in the face. I'm like a coiled snake. Gentlemen, we are about to have a lot of fun tonight. Was that something that played into your very candid relationship? I mean, you mentioned there, Joel, you you kind of you imagined him as if he was it was your your brother who had been killed, no? Was that did that 
kind of not improvisation, but going big, but then maybe kind of going where you wanted to go with it. Did that play into your candid relationship that you shared with Joel in the film? Having a strong sense of what the dynamic was with Joel, between Joel and Carrie was really important because of the fact that Evan improvised quite a bit. Right. I didn't, I was just playing off of him. But the fact that I knew that like, there's the sibling dynamic, she's protective of him, but she's also no bullshit and says it like it is. So whatever he threw at me, I could respond in character because we had done that homework and we'd given that backstory. So it really, uh -huh. it really kept us on track. Uh -huh. I mean, and talking about improvis improvisation, I was speaking to Cody today and he said that there was, I mean, he, I mean, I don't think it's true. I imagine a lot of the comedy was already on the page, but he said that most of the comedy that he, he, he felt came across as the funniest was improvisation. Was there a lot of improvisation? I mean, you said you didn't improvise too much yourself, but I imagine with, I mean, some of those casts, some of the cast in there are, are renowned for improvising and just kind of getting it on the spot. No, did that add a lot more to what you expected from the script or was there plenty in the script already? I, I, I imagine there was a lot, a lot of comedy already in the script, even though Cody says it wasn't as much as, as from the improvisation. The script was already fantastic. And then the actors just brought it to the next level with, their characterization and with the improv, it just brought like a freshness. And from take to take, there was a lot of um, variety in terms of what we were giving Cody to play with. Uh, Evan Marsh, who plays Joel, improvised a ton, David Keckner, of course, and the police officers at the station improvised a lot. What? Us. And it's just, you know, it's a gift as an actor to work off of other actors that are improving a lot and doing it so skillfully because it just keeps you on your toes. You, uh -huh. you have no idea what they're throwing at you. And I love that feeling of, I don't know what's coming my way, but I'm just going to go with it. And I know it's going to be good because these guys are amazing. We're talking about improvisation, but how did you balance it? Because obviously it's a horror movie and it does go down some really dark places, but at the same time, it's kind of goofy horror. How did you all manage to kind of juxtapose those two things together and keep it together and not go too far with one or the other? Well, I think that some characters brought the fun and some characters brought the vicious. Right. Um, and that balanced it. I definitely think, you know, Carrie, for example, um, wasn't, isn't a comedic character. Um, there's a sense of danger and a sense of fear and you don't know what she's capable of. And it's the same thing with the serial killers. Like there's just this sense of unpredictability. You don't know what's gonna happen moment to moment. They're literally capable of anything because they have no boundaries. Um, but then you have the goofiness and the playfulness of, of Joel and you know, of the police officers. Um, so I think that the, the fear factor, the suspense and the gore were really balanced out by the humor and mm -hmm. just made the film that much more fun. Personally, I love watching films like that because I'm on the edge of my seat, but then you can diffuse a bit of tension and laugh rather than being like, uh, the whole time. I was speaking to Cody about balancing the, the gore, the violence with the comedy as well. And he, because it is so, so, so much a comedy, this film at the same time, it kind of gave him a free license to go pretty much where he wanted to with the, with the gore. Can you speak a little bit about the gore? Because I think he must've come up with some ideas that you, maybe you didn't expect or was, it wasn't originally on the scripts that surprised you? I thought that I had seen every kind of death possible just from having worked in video games so much. Right. But this film brought it to the next level. <laughs> um, my personal favorite being uh, a strangulation by intestines. That was pretty epic. Huh? And I, I, I imagine, I believe 99% of it was all, it was all done on camera now as well. It was not CGI like, like you kind of used to with the, the video game work you mentioned, no? It was all done through special effects and special effects makeup. At the same time, I wanted to ask you about, the, because you've worked so much on video games before, and you've not, not just your voice, but also the, the physicality of the games. Now you've, you've kind of used your body to, 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 uh, to portray characters on, on in motion in capture. games. Mm -hmm. Motion capture, that's right. So is that something that you, you find kind of kicks in and you use that as well when you've got to do play a character so physic as physical as Carrie? Working in mocap and motion capture has definitely pushed me to always stay sharp in terms of my physical fitness and my ability to sell violence as characters. Um, but it, it forces me to lean on my imagination even more. It's kind of when you're working with green screen because the sets are so minimal 
that you really have to imagine everything that's happening around you. You know, you have to imagine that like this foam thing you're holding is actually a sword. You really have to push the limits of your imagination to the next level, which is such a great skill as an actor. It's like a muscle. Um, and then when, you know, like I said, working on a set where you have you, you have the effects in front of you, you have these bloody intestines in your hand, um, it, you can drop right into the world really quickly. Were you allowed to choose your own outfit? So to start the way that you styled your hair or was that all very specifically uh, set out before you got to set? Fortunately, the designer was very collaborative. Um, she reached out to me early on and I actually sent her a mood board of some ideas that I had for Carrie. And again, we were very aligned. Uh, for me, a priority was that everything that Carrie wore was very functional. So it's like black because blood stains won't show, yeah. combat boots so she can fight in them, that she's secure, um, enough elasticity in her pants so that she can kick. Uh, so everything had to be like, when I tried all the pieces on, I needed to be able to move in it and then like slicking back the hair so it's practical and out of her face. Um, those key elements for me were really important to, to um, bring the character off the page uh, beyond just what my acting was, but really like the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, it tells a story too. Oh, brilliant. So just to wrap up then, the, this film has gone down really, really well in festivals and I think primarily because of that it's ended up on Shudder which is fantastic um, but at the same time I don't want to obviously I don't want to give anything away I don't want to say who dies who kills everybody off or whatever in the film but we are left on kind of a cliffhanger and like we could get a sequel a spin-off a prequel or something Cody says he's had ideas have you spoken to Cody about it and if you have or if you haven't would would that be something you'd be interested in if it did happen 100 yeah. percent I would be down for a prequel, a sequel, all of the above. They set it up really well. I mean, I want Carrie to have to confront Mr. Midnight. I want to see how her relationship with Joel evolves. I'd also love to see some of the backstory and the history of her training and her work with the organization or the agency, um, how she became the assassin that she is. Um, what happened to her family? There's so much there. There's so much that we could explore. Exactly. You've definitely been giving it a lot of thought, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed, fingers, 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 we'll forget to see yes, that. Yes, but, no, but, but for the time being, thanks so much for your time. I wish you the best of luck with the, uh, the film when it screens uh, tomorrow on Shudder. And hopefully we'll speak about a sequel, a spin-off, or a prequel, or whatever, uh, sometime soon. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers, Amber. All the best. Take okay, care now. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye. Hey, I didn't even gag.